the closest shave is as easy as one, two, three. Max three. Easy loading, easy rinsing, and three blades that shave closer in one easy stroke. It's the easiest way to the closest shave. Max three from Gillette. <laughs> Welcome to another shave here on the Soap Thing Project. This video is the fifth in a six part series of videos called The Evolution of Gillette Cartridge Razors. We have reached the point in Gillette's history where it's time to talk about the Mach 3. This is a razor that was released from Gillette in 1998 and Gillette has been producing it ever since. You'll notice that this one has three blades instead of two blades, which the Atra and the sensor had. We'll talk about why during the shave. This particular razor is a bit older. It is a Mach 3 Turbo from 2001, and it does have an original 2001 cartridge on it that came with the handle. So we're going to use that here today. This is the razor that I've had, the, I think, the most experience with, but not by much. I used a lot of this, and I also used a lot of the sensor when I was younger. So yeah, we're going to do a shave with it, and we're going to talk about it, all the things Gillette Mach 3. Yeah, that's going to be the shave for today. We're going to use the Edge Gel for the shaving cream, <laughs> and then we're going to use the Fathom Aftershave by Dana for the aftershave. Okay, let's get to it. Unsurpassed engineering, unparalleled technology, nothing else performs like it. Champion, Mach 3 Turbo Champion. It's the closest, most comfortable shave. Now with a red hot new look. Test drive one today. Mach 3 Turbo Champion from Gillette. The best a man can get. All right. Two days of growth on the face today. Time for a shave. I'm going to get rid of the excess water on my face and then we're going to slather on some edge gel. Why are we using this stuff? Well, because generally people who are using cartridge razors are going to be using this stuff anyway, so may as well make it make sense, right? It looks like I need some more. Yeah, I do need some more. Let's add a little bit more of this to the face. This goop that comes out blue and smears on white. <laughs> All right, now, time for the Gillette Mach 3 Turbo. Here it is right here. Let's do a shave with it. Here we go. Nice and smooth, minimal tug as far as uh, cartridge razors go. So what's kind of the deal with this razor? Well, this, this razor was kind of an extension of what the two-bladed razors were trying to do, the Atra and the Sensor, and the Track 2. I keep forgetting to mention that one. But basically it was all about, you know, the, the Track 2 was doing these uh, advertisements where they advertised that you know, the first blade would kind of pull your hairs out just a little bit and then slice it off, kind of in the center of where the hair was. 
and then the second blade would come along and shave it again more closely. And so the idea was you had to do less shaving. And so Gillette decided to do this really gimmicky, in my opinion, uh, thing where they just took that whole rationale and applied it to three blades. They were like, well, if you already have to shave less <laughs> with a two-bladed cartridge razor, well, then three blades should make it really quick to get you in and out of the bathroom. Whether it's true or not. I think with two blades that made a little bit of sense, but with this, now we're starting to get into skin irritation territory. Because there's just too much blade making contact with your skin. At least in my opinion, that was kind of where Gillette started going wrong and making shaving not so comfortable it was really because of, you know, razors that had three, four, and even five blades. All right, pass number two. Saved it. Saved the old blob that tried to go into the sink. So what's the difference between the Mach 3 and the Mach 3 Turbo? Honestly, not much. The biggest difference is it had a, uh, a bit more zealous lubricating strip and the uh, micro fins on the bottom that are designed to kind of pull on your skin and pull your hairs out a little bit. Uh, that was a bit more exaggerated beyond the regular uh, Mach 3. You know what, I'm just going to go up. I didn't realize it, this at the time, but the place where these razors started to go wrong is the fact that the cartridge is mounted to the handle at the bottom of the cartridge. You see that, how it's mounted at the bottom? Versus something like the Fusion where you can see it's dead center. And so... Whereas the, the Fusion, you could apply it to your face, and there wasn't very, very many places where the blade could go. It's kind of like you, you apply it to your face, and it's there. It's locked in. Versus this, not sure if you can see that, but look at how much travel you have. And so what that did is it started making people develop these bad habits where they just really kind of crammed it against their face, which is a bad idea. So while they're simultaneously making shaving uh, supposedly faster, they're also now going backwards in that they're starting to create uh, or starting to make people have skin sensitivities that they might not otherwise have had with older razors. So I would argue this is the place where Gillette was starting to really not do themselves any favors. Now that that might be counterintuitive because this is apparently the best selling three bladed cartridge razor in the world. And while that might certainly be true, that doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it a good thing. You know, we have a lot of things that that we buy a lot of in our society where the older version of it was probably better. And I think this is this is one of those. I 
Plus, this was the point where cartridges were starting to get more expensive. You know, the more blades you have in a cartridge, the more expensive uh, it's going to get. You'll notice how I am either putting my thumb on the cartridge or my finger on it. What that is doing is keeping it from having that travel, that pivot. Uh, I don't Like I said, I don't have that problem with the sensor or the Atro because they're mounted dead center. Versus this one, to keep it from having so much over travel, I will just generally tend to do this and make it to where it necessarily can't um, pivot more than I want it to. So I'm almost holding it like a straight razor. <laughs> Uh, but this is one way that you can make these razors work for you is to recognize that the tremendous amount of travel in that pivot is part of the problem. So taking control of that by using your finger or your thumb might help out some people. Okay, I think I've got a close enough shave without doing damage with too much blade buffing, which will equal razor burn. <laughs> All right. Let's have a rinse. See how I did. Yeah, that's a good shave. That is a nice, close shave. I mean, the uh, the Mach 3 is one of those that I... Uh, uh, today I recognize it as the beginning of the end of good razors from Gillette. But at the same time, this is what I grew up with, and so it's hard to hate it. It, uh, it just has a, a special place in my shaved in. Just another one of those sentimental value type things. But I would be lying if I said that this was a great razor. So let's talk about how we've evolved so far. We went from the Techmatic, which was a banded single blade cartridge. And then we went to the Track 2, which was a much more simplified two bladed cartridge. And then we went to the Atra, which was two blades that pivot. And then the Atra Plus was two blades that pivot with a lubricating strip. And then we went to the sensor, which is two blades that pivot with a lubricating strip that are dampened. And then the sensor XL was two blades that pivot with a lubricating strip that are dampened with micro fins. And now we're up to three blades that do all of that stuff with micro fins. And I don't know if I mentioned this, I don't think I did, but the Mach 3 carries over from the sensor. I can get it to focus, it carries over those dampened blades. So if I hold this, you'll notice that those are dampened. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Come on. Right there. See, those blades are still dampened. And so we're carrying over all the technology from previous razors. We're just taking it and carrying it forward. So these are, once you see all these videos back to back to back, You'll, it'll, it'll start to make more sense. These are slow evolutionary changes that are happening over at Gillette. Uh, but I think this is the, the starting point where they were doing a lot of gimmicky things just for the sake of themselves. Uh, I think once they moved past the sensor, they, were, they, were, they moved past... Um, the absolute best way to shave with a cartridge razor. And once, once they got to this, they started going backwards. I mean, I can say that a million times, but that's how I feel about it. But wait, wait, we're not done. We gotta do the aftershave. I almost forgot. Fathom by Dana. And like I said before, this is kind of a fresh woody scent. Um, not so different from Dolce & Gabbana K. This scent is a bit older, but it's vaguely similar to that. This came out in 1990, I'm pretty sure, going back and looking at it. 
It's good stuff though. This is an aftershave that uh, you can get on Fragrance Net. Definitely use their coupons. You can get this thing for like 12 bucks. And the scent on this lingers for a while. And it is a strong scent. It's a good aftershave. It really is. Definitely try it if you're looking for an aftershave like that. Okay, that's it. That's the video for today. Questions, comments, put them in the comment section of the video. Otherwise, until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.